<laughs> uh, thank you all for coming. We're in the middle of votes, uh, so we'll have to make it brief. Um, we're introducing today uh, legislation to repeal in its entirety the Cuba, Cuba travel ban. Uh, this is something that uh, those of us here have worked on for a long time. Uh, for myself, uh, it was one of the first pieces of legislation I introduced when I got to the House uh, 15 years ago. Uh, we've been able to have some votes on appropriation bills, uh, votes that have passed to actually prohibit enforcement of the travel ban but have not been signed into law. Uh, the President has taken action, as you all know, uh, to allow uh, easier travel uh, to Cuba. There are 12 categories for travel currently. Uh, right before the President's action, those were under specific license, uh, making it very cumbersome to get permission and to go with somebody who had a license. Uh, now it's under general license, so a lot of Americans will be able to travel uh, freely to Cuba uh, under this new regulation. But uh, we, we just believe that uh, those restrictions ought to go completely. Um, some will say that we ought to receive something in exchange for this, that uh, if we're giving up something, then we ought to get some concession from the Cuban government. Uh, we, I think it's, uh, we all need to remember that this is a, a sanction or a prohibition on Americans not Cubans. And uh, it's to expect uh, the Cuban government to react with, with some concession when we're not offering a concession. We're simply saying that Americans should be allowed uh, to have the right to travel wherever they would like to unless there's a compelling national security reason. Now, there are no guarantees that this will bring democracy next, next year or the next, um, but I think it's far more likely uh, to, to set conditions uh, where democracy will come sooner. Um, we've tried this current policy that we have, prohibiting travel, uh, for about 50 years, and, uh, and it hasn't worked. And so it's time for something new. It's time to allow Americans to travel freely to Cuba. This will be good for the Cuban people and also good for Americans. I, I've uh, been able to travel uh, to Cuba a number of times with Senator Flake and Senator Durbin. Senator Durbin and I were down there just uh, about 10 days ago. Senator Flake and I made a trip where we stayed on the ground 31 minutes to, uh, to pick up Alan Gross. But we've also had other longer trips. It, it makes no sense to have this prohibition. Senator Flake said it best when he said, uh, it's one thing if another country tells me I can't go to visit them. It's something else if my country tells me. I can't, as, as an American. In my state of Vermont, people can, uh, from where I live, drive a, an hour or so to Montreal, down a plane, fly with Canadians, down to Cuba, no questions asked. Uh, we, this thing hasn't worked. Whoever sent the memo to the President saying, stay tough, those castles will be gone any day now, that memo went to President Eisenhower and President Kennedy, President Johnson, President Nixon, on and on. It, it's about time we show some reality. Uh, Cuba going to change overnight? No. Uh, will we change overnight? No. But will we, will there be more respect for the United States throughout Latin America? Yes. Because they all deal with uh, Cuba just as our biggest allies all deal with it. And they look at us as this anomaly, anomaly which makes no sense. It's, it's time. And the quote is, my wife and I walked down the street in Havana a few days ago, and a man stuck his head out of a shop window and said, are you Americans? He said, yes. He pointed to his window, and he had an American flag in there. We'd never seen that before. It was wonderful. I want to thank uh Senator uh, Flake for his leadership on this. It's not easy. You've been on this issue for a long time. And Senator Leahy, thank you uh, for your leadership. Uh, and it was um, a joy to work with you uh, on the Alan Gross uh, case and now on this next chapter. We tried it for 50 years. We said if we closed the door on Cuba, <coughs> Cuba would change. We did not succeed in that policy. It's time for a new policy a policy that we know is proven to work. Look at what happened when the Soviet Union finally disintegrated. 
It disintegrated because the Warsaw Pact nations and many Soviet republics took a look outside and said there's a better world to the West. Well, the same is true when it comes to Cuba. We don't have to set out to change Cuba as our number one reason, but I think we're going to see dramatic change in Cuba if there is more travel, exchange, and business between our two countries. When I flew over to join with uh, Senator Leahy's delegation, I took what was called a charter flight out of Miami to Havana. I didn't know what to expect, a two-engine plane, a four-engine plane. It was a 737, and it was filled, filled with people traveling into Havana, many of them Americans who were traveling on tours that were acceptable. So we're finding that there's an appetite for Americans to visit Cuba. I walked the streets of Havana early in the morning before our meeting started and had the same experience Senator Leahy did. It was a welcoming. And as we met with the dissidents in Cuba, those who disagree with the Castro regime, 10 out of 12 of them said this is the right thing to do. People finally have a sense of hope in Cuba that things are going to change for the better. So let's eliminate this restriction on Americans traveling. This is the only country in the world where we have these restrictions on Americans. Let's give our people a chance to travel, and they will not only bring money to spend, they're going to bring new ideas, new values, and real change to Cuba. Senator Flick, uh, why not try to go for the full embargo like the President suggested in the State of the Union speech? And has opinion changed in the Senate in your own leadership? Um, in your own party's leadership in order to try to pass this? I'll, I'll let leadership speak for themselves. Uh, as to why not go for the whole thing, I think many of us here, uh, my, I speak for myself, I, I would favor lifting the entire embargo myself. Um, but uh, this is something that, that you just have, a, there's still a difference of opinion on the entire embargo. There is overwhelming support here in Florida, all across the country. Uh, any subset of groups, political party, ethnic groups, whatever, uh, there is support for lifting the travel ban. And, and this is something that uh, we, we think will move ahead. We have four Republicans, four Democrats. Uh, as original co-sponsors, we expect to add more uh, in the coming days, many more on both sides. And so they're, they're just a, a good consensus, I think, uh, to move ahead on travel. Sir, Could you please comment on Ron Cox's comments yesterday? He said that uh, normalizing relations imposed conditions would not proceed unless the United States lifted the embargo, paid retribution for all the damage caused during all these years, and deliver the uh, Guantanamo Bay. What is your reaction to that, one? And two, did you have in your trip to Cuba, uh, in your trip to Cuba, um, just two days before it normalized the first talks, um, you were in Cuba, did you discuss this bill and the plans for this bill with any Cuban officials, did they give you any input? So was, was there any consultation there? When we were, uh, when we went down just the day of the announcement, uh, as you mentioned, we were on the ground for 31 minutes uh, to pick up Alvin Grove, so there was no time. But uh, I think many of us have had discussions with <laughs> Cuban leaders over the last uh, couple of, or decade at least. Uh, uh, but. As far as discussing individual pieces of legislation, no, uh, this is a, this is something that we believe will could happen. This is the prohibition on Americans, not Cubans, and so that's why we're going forward. Part of the and I think I think I, I think you're going to see all kinds of uh, demands made on both sides, but the final decision is going to be made the quiet negotiators who work usually out of the glare of publicity. Uh, you see some in our country say we must have this, this, and this. Some in Cuba will say similar. The fact is, in another, we should look at what they're going to be like a year from now, and two years from now. I think you're going to see dramatic changes. It's just like all the demands made when the Berlin Wall fell. And uh, East Berlin say it must have this, West Berlin say it must have this. Today, you drive in Germany, you can't tell when you go from what was West Berlin into East Berlin. Very quickly, uh, I really feel like the, the way that you change societies is through personal relationships and that the lifting the travel ban would be a tremendous step in the right direction. The other thing is, is you have to be consistent. Uh, before Libya fell, <laughs> Uh, we could get on a plane, we could go to Libya. 
had full diplomatic relations. Certainly that was a country with significant civil rights violations. Go to China, go to Vietnam, and the list goes on and on. So again, I think it's important that we're consistent. There, at this point in time, there's no reason to continue down the path that we've been going for the last 50 years and really have no good result. Senator Bozeman, as a far as the moment as a far as the state board has started, I just as a far as the state senator, how difficult is it to oppose your leadership on this? As a former, as a farm state senator, oh. a red state, how difficult is it to oppose your leadership on this? Oppose Senator Rubio? And can you explain to us why you believe that this is a good first step, and the embargo, I believe you believe, would be a good second step? Well, as I said, it's important for me to be consistent. And when I got here in 2001, winning a special election, uh, really got with Jeff Flake. At that point, we had the Cuba Working Group. This is really one of the first issues that I took up at that time. So my position on this has been very clear, uh, you know, throughout my service here. And so it's not difficult at all. It's we simply, you know, agree to disagree. Why is it the right position? I guess I should ask. Uh, that. Prime, I mean, prime groups are going to be so strong in favor of this. You know, <laughs> concerning Arkansas, <laughs> later on trade. Uh, again, uh, in the state of Arkansas, we probably would come out as, as well as anybody in the sense of being able to sell, to sell rice and poultry and things like that. Senator Durham, so you talked a moment ago about the idea about the senator moving through, or the idea that, you know, that you've seen change, uh, you know, in other places. Uh, uh, senator Leahy, you talked about how in Germany it's seamless now. But when we normalize relations with China, some people would say, you know, good for business, not good for human rights. Uh, Senator Flake, you said, uh, you know, we're not going to see democracy tomorrow. Why are you so optimistic that, you know, there will be change through these interpersonal relations and maybe some of these other places? It hasn't worked. 90 miles. They're 90 miles away. It isn't as if the United States is halfway around the world. The powdered milk that they serve uh, as a milk product to the children in Cuba is imported from New Zealand. They're 90 miles away from the United States. When you look at it, we're clearly, by our proximity, in better in a better shape to have an impact on the future of Cuba uh, than any other nation. And I'm not suggesting we're going to see Cuba change overnight, but by having these exchanges, by opening up, for example, Cuba to the Internet, the world of the Internet, we are going to see an acceleration of debate an acceleration of the exchange of ideas. All these things, I think, are in the best interests of Cuba and the United States. What, what and you, also, you also have a great relationship between a lot of the families in Cuba and the United States. I think that's going to make a big difference. We're up to now to four minutes left in this. What's the path to a vote on this eventually? Would you be willing to offer it as an amendment to, say, the Farm Bill? Or I, I don't know. What, where, where does this go? I think we'll look at all options. We'll be going through regular order. We'll have appropriation bills. That's always been the vehicle uh, before, uh, Treasury bill. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me mention one other uh, benefit to this. In years past, it's not as much now, but in years past, the Office of Foreign Assets Control at Treasury, OFAC, has been charged with, with implementing this. It, it's, it swallows up a big portion of their budget, uh, just chasing down tourists you know, who might want to go to Cuba. At one time, we were stationing people in Canada at airports to make sure they weren't Americans going to Cuba. And that, in my view, was a terrible waste of resources in an agency that has a very important mission to shut down the international uh, you know, financial network for terrorists. And so uh, there are many good things that have come from this. Thank you. Thank you.